In 1812, the British American colonies were in danger of being overwhelmed by an angry and much larger American Republic. Once again, Meyer's plans were overshadowed by war. Myers Creek was not in immediate danger, but it was an important supply and transportation center. All Myers sons were in the militia, but Myers himself wanted no part of it. His lack of support for this war contrasts sharply with the enthusiasm he had shown in the last war. Well, I think it, he didn't regard it as his war. Uh, actually, he didn't regard the revolution as his war at the beginning until something came very close to him and he had to make his choice. He felt the same way in 1812. It wasn't his war. Not only that, he was a much older man and he felt that this kind of thing was for young men. And furthermore, living on the Bay of Quinty where he couldn't even see the enemy, he knew they weren't going to come near him, he just couldn't get interested. Myers refused to sell his harvest at the government's low prices. He hid his pleasure sleigh and his best horses to prevent their military use. And when ordered to take a wagon load of supplies to York, he changed his mind, unhitched his team, and abandoned the wagon on the road. Meyer's actions did not sit well with the local authorities. James and Simon McNabb were two brothers who were commercial rivals. They were millers, they were businessmen, they were rivals of Meyer's. During the war, they were involved with searching out for supplies and services for the troops. And in that capacity, they didn't think that Myers was doing all that he could. Accordingly, after the war, James McNabb particularly, along with some others, brought charges of disloyalty and treason against Myers. The government took no action on those charges, probably because they realized Myers' outstanding record earlier, and also the fact that Myers was close to 70 years of age at that time. The McNabb brothers did manage to burden Myers by billeting troops at his house. On one particular evening, a number of Myers house guests came in very drunk. Myers barricaded himself and Polly in their bedroom, but the drunken soldiers broke in and attacked them. Myers tried to keep them back with his pistols, but to no avail. Polly was beaten, and Myers received a saber cut to the head. An elderly housekeeper was also attacked and died soon after. Legend says that her ghost still haunts the area. The war ended in 1814, and against the odds, Britain's colonies survived intact. Myers survived his own attackers but he did not come out of the war unscathed. Polly died some time after the war, and Myers remarried a widow, Sophia Davy. Myers' reputation had suffered during the war because of the charges brought against him. After the war, the McNabb brothers and also William Bell, another prominent merchant, petitioned government to have Myers' name taken from the community. The government decided that the name Belleville would be given to the community, perhaps because of William Bell's influence, but more likely because of the citizens' desire to honor the wife of the Lieutenant Governor, Francis Gore. His wife's name was Annabella, or Bella for short, therefore Belleville. <laughs> 